My name is Christopher Durso. I'm a senior in the College of Arts and Sciences studying international relations and also a second degree Master of Public Administration student at the Fellows Institute of Government, I'm originally from New Jersey. The guy was giving the speech and it was kind of dragging a little bit and then, all, and then he finally goes and the two winners are and he announced the other winner and then he said, and Chris Durso. And my first reaction was just went, <gasps> because you're right next to the people who didn't get it. So I didn't want to react too much, but you can't hold it in in a moment like that. So I kind of stepped a little bit forward so that the people next to me wouldn't see me like starting to cry a little bit. And then fortunately they took us out into a uh, side room so that we can kind of go over all the paperwork. And right after we finished going through that and talking with the judges, I immediately called my parents. Um, because the funny thing was the guy who ran it for my region is actually an investment guy. So he had a black car SUV for both me and the other winner to take us back to our hotel. So it was kind of like a cool like reality TV moment, like go into the SUV and then was on the phone with my parents and just hearing their reaction, their shock was probably one of the most fun parts of the whole experience. So I actually just decided this week that I will be studying for a DPhil or a doctorate in public policy at Oxford's Robotnik School of Government. Um, that will be a three-year program. I'm still working on figuring out what my dissertation topic will be, but it will be somewhere around uh, international law enforcement and dealing with transnational crime. So directly after finishing my Rhodes Scholarship, I'll be attending law school. I'm still deciding now where I'm going to be going because I'd apply at the same time as a fellowship process. But after that, my goal is to become a federal prosecutor and then later down, maybe 10, 15 years into my career, make a transition more into the policy world, whether that be kind of like I'm like an appointed or working for a government agency or, or an elected office. I'm not sure yet, but definitely want to move into the policy realm to have a, a greater impact in, in shaping the legislation and the rules. Um, because enforcement is one part, but you also need to have the strong rules to be able to support that. And my biggest advice for people considering whether or not to apply for the Rhodes is to definitely do it. When I went into the process, I thought I had zero shot and now I'm a Rhodes Scholar. So you really have nothing to lose. I mean, yes, you'll lose a few hours by doing the application or hopefully maybe a little bit more than a few hours, but um, you know, it's totally worth it in the end. Uh, the opportunities that I'll create are phenomenal. I think also the biggest piece of advice that I would give people going through the process, especially if you get to the interview stage, is to, to not put too much pressure on yourself. I had gone through, as I mentioned, the, the Truman process as well. And because that's the public service fellowship and, and my background in public service, I kind of saw that as almost like a referendum on my life. But when I went into the Rhodes process, I was much more casual about it. And I think that allowed me to really be myself and kind of just have fun with the interview and, and the panel. And, and I think that is really what helped me to do that. And it also just made it a much more pleasant and less stressful experience. I'd say the support from Curve was really extraordinarily helpful in my process, not only in convincing me to apply for the roads, but also thinking through different degree programs that I would be interested in at Oxford and to see where to go with my application. I met with Dr. Gensler several times throughout the process to talk you know, about my initial thoughts on, on how I was going to craft my application and, and what programs to apply for. And then once I was selected as a finalist, I did three mock interviews. I think that was probably one of the most helpful parts of the process because it really gets you used to thinking on your feet, answering questions you may not have expected, and even just talking about yourself because sometimes it's a little bit awkward. Like someone asks you, what do you do for fun? Like, how do you answer that? Uh, and that was really a helpful part of the mock interview process. And they also, in the mock interview, helped me pick out my outfit for the interview, which wound up matching with one of my interviewers. So it, was, uh, it worked out pretty well. I would say what I'm most going to miss about Penn is really the sense of community that's here and also the relationships that I've been able to build here, not only with friends, but also with professors, other mentors, administrators. Like when I'm, you know, walking down Locust Walk, I always, you know, recognize a face or, or see someone. And, and I've really had such an amazing experience here. Like I say so many times, like if I could go back, I would have only applied to Penn when I was applying to college. So I definitely will miss that community. I will miss Philadelphia as a city. I'm coming from Jersey. I kind of grew up visiting Philadelphia quite frequently. So it'll be different um, culture. And from what I've heard, I, I may miss some of the food here too. <laughs>